I picked up this milling machine at an online auction. I got away with $103. It's a Rockwell MD21-120. It's a vertical horizontal combination machine. And I don't think it's led a very hard life as far as usage goes, but as you can see, it's in pretty sad shape and it's been waiting for me to come along and restore it. It has two three-phase motors. The vertical motor is a three-quarter horse and the horizontal motor is a one and a half horsepower and I intend to run both of them off of one VFD. It's also served as a habitat for spiders, hornets, and dirt daubers. It uses this style of thumb screw all over the machine and they're great because they allow you to lock and unlock things but the handle keeps the thumb screw from falling out. That is the original Rockwell belt and there's only a few things missing off of the machine and one of them is the knob to the quill handle here and the other is the handle to the knee. That's the fine feed for the quill and from what I've read this is typically an item that gets damaged because the gear on the inside is made out of aluminum but this one is in good condition. The quill is not exactly seized, but it's not free either, so I had to resort to using a jack, but it came out pretty easy. The head assembly on this is kind of complicated to get apart just because of the way that it's designed, so rather than try and mess with it on the machine, I decided to take the whole assembly off so that I could deal with it on the bench. This is the angle adjuster for the head and it's another item that typically is broken as you can see the gear is aluminum um, but in this instance either the key got left out or someone took the key out and it, it usually gets broken because these bolts right here are not loosened before someone attempts to adjust the the position but it's in brand new condition. So I left this footage in here so you could see how much stress I'm putting on that 3 8 long handle snap-on ratchet. No, really, uh, this was the hardest bolt to remove on the machine. Um, it really was seized up, and as you can see, I spent quite a bit of time working it, but I wound up uh, winning in the end.
There's some additional panels added to the side of this cover, and it seems like it was an afterthought because it's not on there very well, and there's an interference with the motor adjustment knob. Hard to believe that all that can be replaced by one VFD. So the horizontal gearbox is uh, really compact and it's a pretty cool design. And I look really surprised here that nothing is coming out of the drain hole. You can see the fill plug is the square plug to the left side of the, the column there just a couple inches above the drain. And with a little prodding I get a bunch of muck. Yes, that's water coming out of my milling machine. Here I'm taking apart the back gear engagement shaft and it is seized on the other side. There's a collar that goes around the shaft and it has some roll pins that index the location of it and it's actually seized up. So I had a little bit of a hard time getting that apart. There are quite a lot of snap rings on this machine none of which managed to get me but now that I've said that one will get me when I put it back together that's the clutch dog for just engagement of the horizontal shaft so you you can disengage or engage it from that Here I'm removing a woodruff key with a pair of side cutters, just being careful not to apply too much pressure to the key so I don't uh, mar it. The gearbox assembly is located to the column on the bottom with two roll pins that are acting as uh, dowel pins and I was surprised to see that this pulley has uh, needle bearings that you can see here in a second uh, and they're in good condition although they look pretty grungy in this shot. So this is the only broken fastener or broken anything on the entire machine and it was already broken. The head just fell off of it whenever I touched it, uh, which kind of surprised me and I don't know um, how it got broken if somebody was in there before or if it was that way from uh, originally being assembled at the factory. I just don't know, but the, the screw just came out, no problem. I did have a little bit of a problem getting this big gear off. Um, there was some rust in between the shaft and the gear which uh, caused me to have to work it back and forth and clean the debris off as I worked it out.
here's the bearing retainer for the spindle and I'm just locking a pry bar in the front so that I can get the retainer off and under that is the bearing adjuster. The spindle is uh, NMTB30 and if any of you have any information about the arbors that are used or the overarm support all of which I don't have and there's not very much information about I'm sure I'll probably wind up having to make it but if you know anything you got anything anything let me know I happen to have just the right adjustable spanner to get the bearing adjuster nut off. And uh, yes, that's more water coming out of my milling machine. Some very nice uh, uh, cone roller taper bearings there. And surprisingly, not a bit of rust on them. As opposed to this hand wheel and the rest of the table there. But the table looks pretty good. I don't see any marks in it at all. Uh, so either it was lightly used or it was used by someone that knew what they were doing. This machine uses tapered gibs, and there's the one for the table coming out. And the, the one for the saddle also came out with no issue, but the knee, that's another story. I'm looking under here like I'm going to find gold or something. I will save you my hours of trial and tribulation with the knee and just skip to the part that worked. So in the end, I decided to remove the column and the knee from the base and do this, which uh, managed to remove it. It wasn't stuck on there that hard, but there was no other way for me to get enough pressure on it to get it to move. The ratchet strap is applying some downward pressure so that the knee doesn't try to tip while I'm uh, removing it. I did this part the next morning, so basically I spent an entire day getting to this point. So it was uh, somewhat of a challenging disassembly, but uh, not terribly difficult. And uh, it will be a long video series. I don't know how many videos it will be, but uh, here's the aftermath of day one. Thanks for watching. Oh, and I'll show the reason for the knee jam consternation next time.